Numerical Computation, Chapter Two, Video Number Eight. We will now take a look at an example using the arrow formula. Let's first recall the arrow formula, which we proved in the previous video. So the arrow theorem says arrow equals to one over m plus one factorial f to the m plus one derivative evaluated as some cosine times the product of all these m plus one terms, which are x minus x i for i from zero to m. In this example, we consider the simple case where m equals to one. That means we'll be taking only two interpolating points. Let's denote them by a and b, and so our x zero is a and our x one is b, and assuming b bigger than a, we want to find an upper bound for the arrow. So if n equals to two, we see from the arrow formula that the derivative here will be the second derivative. So this motivates a notation. So let's call、um, the maximum value of the second derivative for x on the interval between a and b in absolute value. Let's call this number m. So there is another way of writing it is to use this concept of norms. So this is actually the L infinity norm of the function f double prime. We also see that by putting in x zero equals to a, x one equals to b, this product here is nothing but x minus a times x minus b. And if we want to have a bound on the absolute value of it for x between a and b, we can just try to find the max value of this expression. Now, since this is just a polynomial of degree two, a quadratic polynomial, one can simply differentiate it once and find the zero for the first derivative, and verify that's the max value for it, and plug that in, and that is actually. The value x equal to a plus b half, and then you evaluate it, and this is what you have. So, if you don't see the details right away, I recommend you to work it out in detail by yourself and verify you get this expression. Now we are ready to put everything together in the arrow form. So arrow. When you want a bound of it, you always consider the absolute value of it, and you try to find some quantity that will be bigger than the arrow. Okay, so the arrow formula says arrow equals to one over two factorial, which is half, and f double prime of cosine times the absolute value of this product. So using the notation we have. We will have the f double prime of cosine. We replace it by the L infinity norm, so we get something bigger. So we have a less than or equal to sign. Okay, then this term, we use the maximum value it can have. We put it here, and so this expression here will get bigger. So we keep the less than equal to sign. And now you can just do some algebraic manipulation, put two and four together, and you get one eighth. F double prime L infinity norm times b minus a square. Now this might seem to be a rather trivial estimate, but I would like to stress that this estimate in the end becomes very important. So I would like you to kind of memorize this form. So arrow is bounded by that thing. Okay, and pay attention. If now, for example, b is pretty close to a, that this interval is very small, and you're interpolating with two nearby points, and this actually give you a rather sharp arrow bound. Say b minus a equals to 0.01, then b minus a square will be 0.0001. So it actually offers an arrow bound. The final observation we would like to make. Is that looking at the arrow formula, we see that 
1 over m plus 1 factorial is a constant, nothing we can do about it. f m plus 1 derivative x psi, that is given once the function f is given, and there's not much you can do, and you don't know the location of the psi, so the best you can do to get an estimate will be taking the maximum value of this. But this final term here, x minus xi, you see for different xi's, this becomes a different function. So here's the obvious observation that error bond depends on the distribution of nodes xi. So in the next few um, videos, we'll look at several different cases of choosing different nodes xi starting from a uniform distribution.